Well, I'm super happy today to present Peter Shankman. He's one of those, he's the 54 on the top market list. And I would like to be very, yeah, very I would like to be very, very specific with him. And, and I think it's very important. Five books, three exit, top speaker, and he talks a lot about customer experience economy. Thanks, Peter, for being here. And we're here to learn from you. Glad to be here. Thank you for having me. Well, Peter, I was just telling to you before we started, if you can tell us a little bit, how did you start here? And one, one thing that we have in common, I think it's, it, could be, it could be something difficult to go ahead, but I think it's, it's beautiful and it makes you what you are today. It's yeah, I, you know, I've been very fortunate that, that I've come up with ideas and I've implemented them uh, and they've worked. And a lot of that has come from having uh, ADHD, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Um, rather than uh, sit in a room and work for someone else, you know, I, I've never been good at that. So for me, it's, it's really about focusing on uh, coming up with new ideas and allowing myself that freedom to fail, right? To succeed and to fail. Uh, and, uh, we don't allow ourselves enough opportunity to fail, which is a mistake because if we let ourselves fail, we can do incredible things. Uh, every time we fail, we learn from it. You know, I've failed hundreds of times and um, I'm able to use that to then have tremendous successes. I don't think we allow ourselves enough uh, opportunity to fail. I love what you're saying. Do you think, do you allow yourself fail more as although you get? Because I think you're like five to 10 years older than me. I am 37, you don't have to share your age, okay? Um, is it, do you think it comes like the older you get, it's like the more you fail and the more successes you have and then you're more patient. Do you think it comes with that? Yeah, I think that, that, that you know, success is, is very um, addictive. And when you do something and you have fun with it and you have a good time with it, you want to do more of it. And so I find that the harder I work, the harder I want to work. Mm. And the more I want to do, no question about it. Mm. I one and you started Hero and you sold it after three years. Can you share a little bit how it went? Because three years to do an exit is it like tremendously fast and how successful? It is it fast. Been? Yeah, I, I got lucky. You know, Hero came about as an idea. Uh, I thought it might be fun to help out some friends and to to help some reporters because I, I talked to everyone. And uh, it just blew up. It was one of those things that was a great idea and, and got very lucky, you know, good timing, all that. And um, it exploded. And um, when it was acquired, uh, you know, it was acquired because it was the right time and the right place. And it was a very simple process. It was a very simple um, uh, 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 idea that worked at the time that it did. And so, you know, everyone says, oh, can you repeat that? I said, I don't know. I, I don't know if I can repeat that. You know, a lot, of, a lot of success tends to be right place, right time, as well as hard work. And I think you put those two together and, and you get a little bit of everything. Just for everyone to know, Haro is a platform that help, it's help a reporter out. And it was just, uh, it was, uh, he's one of the founder, Peter's one of the founders, and it took three years from, starting and i think it puts in contact um bloggers and stuff like this and news guys is that correct yeah it connects journalists with sources all Thank around you. the world journalists with sources that's the correct word and is this still going on who who acquired was it like a communication company it was or? acquired by a company called Cision. uh they um they work in the the business wire uh space so they work in the, in the public relations and marketing space Okay, that's it. they acquire and they kick you out basically. And you pay out. Well, I had a two year. I had a two year earnout, and I worked uh, worked for them for two years, and it went. Uh, it, it was fun. What, what, what was it like? Once you sold this, like fuck, I sold it. What the hell am I going to do now? Did it no, I don't. I, you know, I don't do well with boredom. Boredom for me doesn't work really well. So for me, it was very much about um, about. Uh, figuring out a way to, to do something new. And so I really started focusing on the customer economy and on the concept that um, you can do uh, tremendous things if you are just a little bit better 
for your audience than what people expect. We don't expect good quality. We don't expect good, um, good uh, customer service. We don't expect anything like that. So anything we can do um, to benefit our customers and our audience um, is very easy. You know, I don't think we, we know that enough, but it's, it's very, very simple to take care of your customers and take care of your audience simply because they don't, they don't do, they don't expect quality support, quality service. And so if you can be just a little bit better than what people expect, you're doing great. Mm, I, I love, and one of the examples you say is one of your talks, you say who came by fly or who came by bus, how was it? It's like, yeah, it was amazing. Well, your flight was just like normal. They take right. you from A to B. I think that's a good example if you can share it. And, and because we expect A to B, and if it wasn't right on time, it's amazing. Is that correct? Is that good enough? Yeah, it's true. We are, you know, in this place where, where we don't expect anything. We expect to be treated like garbage. And so if you just go a little bit above that, you know, I don't even need you to be great. Just a little bit better than what people expect. And uh, you'll win everything. You don't need to be awesome. You don't need to change the world just be a little bit better than what people expect you to be how important would be in that process is it the product is it the people involved it's everything you can't you you have to hire people who care about people um if you hire people who who don't care about people that's going to show through in your business but if you hire people who truly do believe in people and want to help people um you have a much better chance of of creating a great company i love because this is probably one of those like it's not a, a marketing type of thing it's a really core thing of the business it's the core of like why you build a company it's the core thing that it then transcrates to customer yeah it's no question about it you know at the end of the day um we are a society that does like to feel good and does like to help people and does like to know that we're doing well. So if we are beneficial and we take care of our customers just a little bit better than, like I said, what we expect, we're going to get some quality results out of it. Mm, I love it. One, I think one of your most famous books is Faster Than Normal. That I used to fast yeah, that, everything. That what on the ADHD side, yeah. That focuses on the ADHD side on the premise that um, having a faster brain uh, most entrepreneurs do. Most entrepreneurs tend to be um, ADHD. And uh, having that faster brain, as long as you know how to use it, can actually do tremendous things. It can benefit um, your business. It can grow your company. It can uh, destroy your company. It can do a little bit of everything. Yeah. Uh, you know, you have to have rules in place. You have to have these sort of ways of thinking and, and, and ways of sort of staying on the course so that you are, you're, you're focused on the the right way uh, and you're not veering off, you know, you're driving a very fast brain. If you start making hard lefts and hard right turns, you're going to crash into a tree. So you want to make sure you don't do that. I love the recommendations, man. I really, it seems like you're talking only to me, but I'm, I'm sure everyone in the group is going to be telling a little bit, like everyone we have a little bit ADHA. One, I think I read that you have four, steps on your life and this one is elimination of choice how when you wake up what happens in your wardrobe and i think it would be amazing if you can share it with everyone yeah the basic premise is that i need to be structured and focused at all times so i don't go off the rails so you know i wake up usually around 3 45 4 in the morning i hit the i hit the gym or the the, the treadmill or the bike immediately i get a workout in uh as soon as that's done i go and i focus on um on um uh my closet has two sides to it. One is uh, it's, it's labeled speaking slash TV and it's a button down shirt, jacket and jeans. And the other side is labeled office slash travel and a t-shirt and jeans. And that's it. My vests, my sweaters, all that stuff is in another closet because if I had to look at that stuff every morning, I'd get distracted and I'd go off the grid. Um, you have to eat healthy and you have to get enough sleep. Those are my four rules. And, and, and when I don't follow them, things That's tend it. to go bad. I love it. And I am very similar in many ways. And how difficult 
if we have implement the structure is difficult if we don't have clear objectives. I think structure goes when we have how often you prepare your objectives and if you have any recommendation to prepare objective for everyone. Yeah. Else. The best thing I can say is work backwards. Have that goal, not even so much just the goal. Try to imagine the feeling you're gonna have when you achieve that goal. When you achieve that goal and you feel amazing, remember that feeling because that's what you're striving for. That's what you're going for. That's what you're trying to get again. So the more you can follow that feeling, the better you are at being able to recreate it. And that's going to allow you to build that mm. sort of pathway back. NLP talks about the feelings when, that you have when you achieve the goal, isn't it? Yep. I love it. How do you achieve, how do you get to the number 54 of the digital marketers? Do you tweet a lot? I have no idea. I assume, I assume everyone else on that list is just terrible. I, I don't know. I have no idea I why I'm so like that. I mean, it's like, I'm like flattering, but I have no idea. Uh, do, do you use a lot of social media? Do you have like an amazing, amazing agency who tweets every word that you say? You know, I, I try to keep my, um, I try to keep my uh, social media to follow through on the things that I that I, I focus on. I try to stay on topic. Um, I'm at Peter Shankman on all of the socials, so I keep my my uh, my uh, your name is easy name to find. Same everywhere, so people don't get confused. Yeah, it's um, it's a good place to be. But you know, again, it's I don't care so much about social media. What I focus on is making sure that I am giving good quality content that people can actually benefit from. I'm sure your wife must be helping you because my partner always helps me, man. Because I try, I, sometimes I get off roads like, Jared, this is shit. I don't know if it happens. I, have to, but I believe I, 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 I have terrible imposter syndrome. A lot of times I don't believe that I'm, I'm doing the right thing or whatever, but you know, you have to believe in yourself. You have to keep pushing forward every single day. Mm, I love believing you said, and one other thing that I heard, uh, you said, no snooze and get up 30 minutes earlier. If you snooze, you're fucked. Yeah, it's so true. And how, how, how can we make sure we don't snooze? How, how, give me some recommendations, man, because keep I do have three alarms. Keep doing things that push you forward. Keep trying new things. Don't worry about failure. Don't worry about what other people might say. Keep doing new things. Always try new things. Mm -hmm. The feeling of success that one time is what's going to propel you to do it again and again and again. Is it one of the reasons why you did five books? The other one is a Zombie Loyalist. Yep. If you can tell us a little bit about the Zombie Loyalist, what you did, and, and how long did it took you to write it? Um, I wrote Zombie Loyalist in 36 hours. Because I had, um, I had uh, uh, an overdose of Adderall or something like that. Well, close. I had a year's deadline, and I did all the research oh, nice. for months, and then I forgot and and focused on something else. And then my editor called me and she goes, "You have two weeks left to write the book," and so I booked a round trip to to Asia, and I oh, got nice. a, I got on a flight in Newark Airport. I wrote chapters one through five on the flight out, turned around, uh, landed, got back on the same plane, same seat. Two hours later. Wrote chapter six through ten. Um, I landed thirty six hours later with a book. Wow, amazing! Is it like power of focus, isn't it? It power. is hyper focus. Uh, hyper focus is a real thing. Hyper focus, and we have another one. Do you have any funny? Can we do that as well? Another book that you launch and customer service and digital influence. Yep. Yeah. Do you? Yeah, I. Uh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. I think that, um, you know, a lot of my books have the same mentality, which is that, um, you know, we don't have to be brilliant. We just have to be a little bit better than the next guy. And, and again, that's not really hard to do. Mm. Wonderful. And when are you the next, are you, I don't know if you're coming to Barcelona, to Europe, anyone who comes. Wants you know, to see your I love, I love Europe. It doesn't take much for me to get there. Simply, you know, ask and I'll, ask and I shall come. It's not hard. So it's, it's, uh, I'm happy to do it. We'll make sure if some of the guys coming to Barcelona to, to book you, if, if they can. Um, Peter, one book recommendation and one life hack. 
Well, you said a lot of life hacks today, but... It well, the best life hack ever is getting up a half an hour earlier than, than you have to, because that gives you a half an hour of freedom, uh, so you're not late, so you're not, you can handle last minute surprises. Getting up a half an hour earlier will change your life. Uh, I think the, a great book, other than mine, of course, is called Deep Work uh, by a guy named Cal Norris, and it focuses on um, the premise that, that we have to stay focused on what we do Things like Slack and, and Instant Messenger and, and text, and those are killing our productivity. Wonderful. Peter, thank you very much. I have a lot of notes we will share with you and to the whole community, all the notes that we did. Thank you very much for this minute with us, and I hope to see you soon in Barcelona. You got it. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you later. Bye-bye.